Good afternoon. And welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. Today we celebrate the third Sunday in Lent. I almost said ordinary time. In Lent. And today in our gospel, we're going to hear about two very different kinds of water. The first one we're going to hear about is the water that satisfies our physical thirst. And the second is very different from that. And it's a living water that Jesus is talking about. So when you hear the gospel today, I just ask you to think about what this living water is and what thirst it can satisfy in our lives. And before we begin today, as always, is there anybody celebrating a birthday today or this week? Go ahead. Eighth and sixth, happy birthday. Father's pointing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, somebody had a birthday. Now he told me that he was already uh, initiated. <laughs> well, we can celebrate. Chuck's birthday was yesterday. Yesterday, happy birthday. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody celebrating an anniversary today or this week? Oh, go ahead. Which, how many? 40. Happy, happy anniversary. Today we're asked to hold these people in our thoughts and prayers. For Carol Bartellamy, Ed Wallander, and Sue Satori, and so many others recovering from strokes, for their families may healing and strength be theirs. For Tom, Ruth, Barb, and Sue, Mary, Kathy, and Joe, for Bob Keither, Lindsay Van Ness, and Lucy Wallander, for Bob Thiel, Vincent, Don, and all those struggling with cancer and other health concerns. We offer these prayers and the prayers we hold deep within our own hearts and present them before the Lord today. At this time, I ask you to please stand and greet your neighbor. Please join us in singing, Enter the Journey, number 10.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. A warm welcome to all of you who have gathered here this day. A warm welcome to those of you who attend 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock Mass. Welcome to 4.30. <laughs> must be snowing or something tomorrow. <laughs> we gather here once again this beautiful Lenten day. We gather once more to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply, deeply in love with us. And so it is we pause. We pause that we might have our thirst quenched once more here at this liturgy. And we pause and pray that God's mercy, God's peace, our heart's desire, fill us once more. Lord Jesus, today we too gather at Jacob's well to listen to your words of wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us mercy through your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you truly are the living water that leads us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us be seated once more to be nourished by God's Word. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Oh 
they would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Masai in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If to A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me? a Samaritan woman, for a drink. 
for Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where, then, can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was speaking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or, why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, Look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the poor and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. 
Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this truly is the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue our journey toward the great Easter sacraments. And today we listen to, to the fifth sign. John's gospel does no miracles. There are seven signs in the book of signs. And starting on Holy Thursday, the reading, washing of the feet, the book of glory, when Jesus is, is ready to assume and ready to once again say yes to what God has sent him to do. And in this fifth sign, we have the woman at the well. Incredible. You know the story. You just heard Deacon Steve share it beautifully. Jesus, tired, sends the disciples off to town. It's noon, the heat of the day. He's at the well, and a woman comes and says, he says to her, I'm thirsty, give me a drink. Of course, as the conversation goes on, remember what you heard, Samaritans and Jews, nothing. Absolutely not. They intermarried once the ten tribes of Israel collapsed to the Assyrians. They intermarried, so they were, they were pushed away. And the woman looks at him and says, you have no bucket. You have no bucket. How, how can you get water? You have no bucket. I would give you living water, he says to her, but you have no bucket. If you only knew who I was, you would have asked me for a drink, and I would have given you a drink. And so the story goes on, and he asks about her husband, and she had five, and it's just incredible. And then the disciples come back, and it's even worse because they don't get it. But I want to focus just on one little sentence. She set down her jar, her water jar. She set down her jar. She ran to the town and said, come and see someone who told me everything I ever did. Could he be the Messiah, the one to come? She set down her water jar. So we have a phrase, and I, I, I have a question. Um, do you remember this crazy commercial? And it really is bad. It's a bad commercial. You ready? Here it is. <clears throat> What's in your wallet? <laughs> have you seen it? Dumb. I want to change a word. What's in your bucket? What's in your bucket? I hear that a lot, especially as I get older. People, I don't know why they're asking me. I still think I look 40. And people are looking at me saying, Father, got anything on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? I don't want you to, I mean, that I'm not going to have you. What's on your bucket list? Meet the Pope, Pope Francis. Write a book. Teach Tolkien or be a scripture scholar. Edit, Archaeology Biblical Review magazine. What's on your bucket list for your life? Is Jesus in that bucket? You see, in my life, I've had a lot of things. That's why the woman who set her jar down, I went, oh my gosh, because then I have to look and see what's been in my bucket in my life. Pride, 
Oh, my Lord, when I was in my 30s, I had to pretend I knew everything because all new pastors are supposed to know everything, and I didn't. Arrogance, ego. What else is in my bucket that I thought would quench my thirst? At least a case of Pepsi-Cola a week. You're like, really, is that all? Never mind, that's for another sermon. I had to sit back and take a look what is in that cracked, leaking bucket of mine that never will quench my thirst. Never, never, ever. And the woman set down her bucket, a former way of life. She ran away from that jar. And she embraced a new way of life. Because we all have buckets, and the buckets are filled with things that will never quench our thirst, but we go back again and again and again and again. No matter what that might be in our life, we go back to it again and again. Is it that wound? Is it that hurt? What is it that we go back to again and again in our life? And all the Lord wants us to do is set down our jar, our bucket, and that's why I said it's cracked and leaking. At least mine was. I don't know about yours. And then take that, toss it aside. Bad memories, whatever it might be. And then what? Why do you think he even talked to her? It's because he looked her right in the eye. Do you ever have somebody look you right in the eye? I mean, somebody look you in the eye and they looked right into your soul, right into your heart. And you wondered, because they look with you at lo with love to you. It's the same thing. Notice where my hands go. It's just a habit. I'm always looking for cheeks. It's a habit. Because that's what Jesus did to a Samaritan and a woman. He, alone with a woman in his day, verboten. That's German for not allowed. And that's what he did. He looked right in her eyes. And she knew he was authentic, and he knew he was thirsty for her faith. Pure and simple, thirsty for her faith. That's why that one line just struck me. She set it down. Why would you set your livelihood down? Why would you set, when you had to go to the well, you didn't get, somebody's going to steal that. Why would she set her bucket down? Because she needed that day upon day upon day. Why would we set down the things that never ever will, will quench our thirst? Why would we do that? Because we find someone better. We give our life to the Lord. And that's what makes all the difference. I pray in these days ahead that you and I might absolutely do that. What's in your bucket? What are the things that you have to keep filling and filling and filling, and they never satisfy. <laughs> they never satisfy. And maybe we wonder why we're not satisfied at times. It's because we're filling this with our stuff rather than with the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that be so for you and I. May we truly leave our bucket behind, and may we drink and taste the water of eternal life with Jesus and we'll never be thirsty again. And you're probably saying, how do you know? I'll close with that. How do you know? Because I'm in the process of setting my bucket down. You're like, but you're old. 66 and three quarters. Isn't it a little late? No. It's never too late to set down everything that we thought would bring us salvation and embrace Jesus. Never too late. That's how I know. And I'll never go back again. Well, today, there is a couple in our midst who are celebrating uh, 40 years. I would do it in my best Irish accent, but you're not Irish, are you? No. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, look at that. I was right. So I'm going to, if you don't mind, just right where you are. Is that okay? Would you like to stand right where you are? 
Mark and Debbie Stock are celebrating 40 years. They're surrounded by their family. That's a beautiful gift. And so we're going to ask God's blessing upon you today. Generous and loving God, we ask your blessings upon Mark and Debbie. May they continue to praise you and they are happy and turn to you in any sorrow. May they be glad that you help them in their work and that you are always with them in their need. May they continue to pray to you in the community of the church and may, be, may they be your witnesses, not so much in their words, but how they love and how they treat all who come before them in their path. And may they continue to live unto a ripe old age together and come at last unto the kingdom of heaven and pass down their faith to the generations that shall come after them. Bless them in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Congratulations to you. Let us all rise, please. And let us once more profess our faith and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To you, gentle God, your daughters and sons turn with all our hearts. With what do we bring? What shall we give you except our very lives and these humble prayers? For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and for all the bishops, priests, and deacons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, that they would govern wisely and justly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the conversion of our hearts and minds during this Lenten season, that we would strive to imitate our Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and the unemployed, for those suffering from depression or addiction, and for all those in any kind of danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose homes are ravished by war and natural disaster, may they find peace and relief through Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular today for the deceased members of the Jonason and Parizek families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, to you we turn once more. Be our light, our help, our strength. Above all, be the watcher of our life when all else fails. You never do. Guide us we pray through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Let us all be seated as our sacred altar table is clothed and prepared this day. Please join us in singing number 11, Seek the Lord, the B verses B. Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we sing. Holy, 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 holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord. And from the world's very beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms are outstretched between the heavens and the earth to become that lasting sign of your covenant. Why, he desired to celebrate Passover once more with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles the human race to you. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of the heavens, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Thomas, and all the saints, and with our departed brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy and then, freed at last from every wound and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of the Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. 
Let us rise, for indeed it is at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Dear Spirit, and let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all unto everlasting life. Amen.
please join us in singing number 12. Come to the water, number 12.
Before we close this night, um, just a couple of reminders or an announcement for you or two. Uh, Bishop Ricken, uh, this is going to be the kind of the least of everything, but Bishop Ricken has, maybe you've heard this, has given permission for you for all the Irish only. <laughs> only if you're Irish heritage can you eat meat. Aren't you lucky? But no, he did give uh, a dispensation uh, that you can eat meat on Friday, which is St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. So just so that you know if you haven't read it, um, that is true. So let's hear it for corned beef and cabbage. So there we are. Just wanted you to know. Again, my heart, all I can ever tell you is thank you, thank you, thank you for so much. There are so many things that we need to pray, so many, um, so many asks for our, our, our sacrifices, both spiritually and monetarily and, and physically, so many asks. So thank you so much for those that have shared with the bishop's appeal so far. Um, over $27,000, thank you. So we are, we are over halfway to our goal, which is 42. So thank you. Again, if you haven't made a gift, I encourage you to pray. And I know I said pray, choose, and give. And again, even if you're saying, gosh, I can just pray, please do that. We need prayers in this world, so please pray. That's so important. To the mercy ships, over $1,000, I believe, has been collected so far. So again, thank you. Oh, I, I just keep saying thank you because it's not how much we give, it's that we continue to give together and pray and see what the Lord is asking us to do, okay? So that is, is so important for us. Finally, that table there that has little white cloths and it has a candle on it and it's got all these holy water bottles. Um, and tons of holy water right there. So again, last week I talked about Advent wreaths and how important that is. And so please take a cloth with you because it has a little bit of chrism. I think it's the 2016 vintage, I'm not sure. But it's, it's got a little of that blessed oil on it. And so your house will smell like sacred chrism. And find your baptism candle. I asked you, that was your homework. You need to look for your baptism candle. As it gets closer to Easter, I'll tell you why. And then please take water with you and then find a little bowl and pour some blessed water. And then have that on your table anticipating what's coming. Anticipating the great feast, the great solemnity, the great festival of the, of the Easter season. Okay? So please do that. Take a look and once and see if you can dig in your attic and find your baptism candle. Now, if you're saying, I don't have mine, well, we're going to give you one if you don't, because I'm going to be the first one that's going to need one, because I don't have mine either. You're saying, but you're the priest. I know. I always tell you my sins to give you hope. So um, that's real important, all right? So if you don't have one, that's, right, we're, we're going to, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get one eventually, and just eventually, you really will. But that's why I want you to start setting up and keep looking, all right? That's so important to do. Are there children ages 3 to 12 who would come sit with me at the step just for a moment? Okay. You can sit any place you want. You want to sit next to me? Maybe not. Our bishop talked about five practices, remember? So it was rosary, confession, or sacrament of reconciliation. That's what you would know it by today. And he also then, he talked about adoration. Adoration. So do you see what's on the side credence table? Do you see that tall? Do you know what that's called? See, it looks like a sunburst. What's that called? Do you know? Anybody that knows, I don't know what I'd give you. If I was a teacher, I don't know what you get today in school for a prize. I'd give you more than a sticker. That's called a monstrance. And the blessed host is put in the center. And this past Wednesday, the 6th and 7th graders, there were so many confessions that they were here sitting quiet for 45 minutes in front of the monstrance. And that's adoration. When you see that ever on the, on the altar, that just means that Jesus is present. That's one of his presences. 
because he's present in you, he's present in the music, he's present in his word, and he's present on this table, which is sacred, okay? So that's called adoration, okay? There's another fancier word for it, if you like Latin. It's ostensorium. I'll quiz you next week. Isn't that a big word? Try that one in a spelling bee. That would be something, okay? That's just another word. All right. So, behold the Lamb of God on the altar. You hear me say that, right? And behold the Lamb of God when the gold starburst is out. I like that because I had an adult this morning at 6.30 at the grocery store call it a starburst. An adult called it a starburst. And so I'm going to call it a starburst with you. Okay. So there's something that you can put together. That's for you. I'm going to give you the best side because if you look on the other side, you're going to see my picture and I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Don't laugh. Oops. And so I want you to see what it's going to look like this when you're all done. You get a chance to put that together and the other side is, is oh, I better turn these over. There we go. That's for you and for you, okay? That's just to remind you when I say, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, right? I'm holding up the host. And I want you to remember that, okay? Behold the Lamb of God. And so when we give you communion and say, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, guess who that is? It's twofold. It's Jesus and you. Amen. That's right. The body of Christ. Wow. Thanks for looking. Thanks for coming to the step. We love you so much. Don't forget. Okay? You can take that home and put it together and remember this day. And so let us all rise, sacred assembly, and let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still here on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat, ask you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of these your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you, and our neighbor, we may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing, This Day God Gives Me, number 13. <laughs>